So I'm going with genuine Volvo. Uh, I could get a Bosch rebuilt for about $40 less, but even though this thing says core charge on it and all that stuff, it doesn't have one. Uh, my usually competitive Volvo parts web store was just outrageous by the time you uh, mailed it back, paid the postage back, and got your core charge refund. It was uh, like $50 more. So anyway, you really need to shop around unless you want to go full-blown uh, rebuilt or Chinese. Well, Volvo's Chinese now, so I don't know what I'm talking about. So anyway, uh, let's uh, look at this starter before we get started. So here we go. Got some paperwork here. I roll parts. See, it doesn't really say anything about a core charge. I mean, that's why I bought it. Um, was uh, under four hundred dollars, three ninety one eighty. That includes shipping and everything, and that's what you really need to look at. You can get them cheaper, but then you pay for shipping, and if there's a core charge, you have to pay for the return postage, which could be anywhere from fifteen to twenty dollars, which is fifteen or twenty dollars less you're going to get back on the core charge. So by the time I did all the math, the only cheaper way to go was uh, Bosch rebuilt which, you know, seemed acceptable to me, but I didn't end up not doing it. So this thing is weighing in at 10.3 pounds. So replacing a starter, the procedure is pretty much the same for every vehicle ever made, and that's there's uh, two or three bolts holding it on, and typically there are two electrical connections, uh, big, huge... Uh, bus line and then like a trigger wire to shoot the solenoid over and really the procedures between vehicles don't change much there may be a splash shield there may be a heat shield there may be some steering linkage in the way and those little details and stuff makes it unique to each vehicle but all in all it's uh disconnect the battery remove the electricals remove the bolts or nuts that hold it on, take the old one out, put the new one in, reverse, connect the battery, you're good to go. So anyway, so let's see the details on this one. So the starter is located uh, right here. So I'll see how much I have to uh, remove in order to get access to it. So here we are with the uh, starter all unbolted, ready to remove. Uh, I have a rag stuffed in the end of the hose where I breached the cooling system and you can see that the main electrical lines and the coolant lines go into the heater hoses uh, back in the heater core behind the firewall are all in the way and of course the uh, bracket that I just showed you or will show you so here's the starter right here all disconnected unbolted electrically disconnected ready to come out so and as you can see all the hoses and everything are all in the way so um, I'll just try and fish it out of there and I'll let you know how I do it all right the way I did it is I pulled it back rotated it around so the back went to the firewall the front came forward and then I just all right, well, that's where it goes, or at least that's where it's going to be when I reinstall it. All right, to reinstall, I'm going to try and do the more direct approach here. See if I can fish it in there. Doesn't look promising. Solenoid wires, coolant lines, crap in the way. Uh, I'm making progress. So it is going in, direct approach there. Um, just had the coolant lines in the way. And we're in, just making sure I'm in the alignment tabs, I'll bolt it in. Alright, 
starters in. Alright, next thing in is the bracket. Connect the hose and bolt it down in five locations. And then we'll just uh, hook everything back up, all the electricals, all of the uh, coolant lines. I had, had to disconnect two coolant lines, uh, in addition, of course, to this one. And all of the plugs uh, should be idiot-proof, meaning that you cannot put the uh, wrong plug in the wrong place. So, let me start reassembly. Fun stuff. Well, it's a long recording, huh? A long shot. Maybe I'll edit it out. Maybe I'll show you that it just took me hours to do this. Alright, just putting everything back together as best I can. So... Now we'll see how this goes on. You know, and it's just time consuming. You need to make sure you don't miss a plug or a hose. Alright, well I will say this. This video is not going to be a step-by-step -step video. I can tell you that because I really struggled and I'm not going to show where all the plugs go in. Like I said earlier, I think they're idiot proof in that you can't plug it in the wrong place. So, I'll clean up my electrical connections with my wire brush here and, well, kind of wrapping it up, putting back the final pieces. Got one electrical connection left, that's the mass airflow sensor. Well, except for this guy, which I'm not counting. So, just uh, wrapping up a little few details here, putting air box back together and I just want to say that this was not a fun job of course replacing a starter motor on a V8 engine a Volvo XC90 or any other Volvo V8 engine is pretty rare for the owner to do that himself you're gonna have to reach the cooling system. Sorry about that. So have some coolant ready. You'll need to top off the reservoir. Um, I really don't think there's any bleeding procedure. Uh, I will just uh, swing over here. Just uh, top off the reservoir and it'll take care of itself. So I'm assuming this is going to be mostly for entertainment. Not really for someone to follow and do it themselves.